Hi, hi, it's Joy Foster, founder of Tech Pixies, host of the Sparkle and Thrive podcast. And we are back for our annual favorite series. This is the number one series we do every year. It's our social media trends series. So if you've missed the social media trends series so far, you can go and catch them on our website, techpixies.com forward slash podcast. And on, in our free resources, you can download all of the trends, techpixies.com forward slash trends. So Marianne Avery is our LinkedIn coach. She was also a Tech Pixie. Most of our coaches were Tech Pixies at one point or another. And uh, Marianne, you are now our LinkedIn guru, coach, expert, uh, call it what you will. And you've put together a fantastic podcast episode for us today on all things LinkedIn, what's happening, what's trending in 2024. So let's get started. What would you like people to know about LinkedIn in 2024? What's important? I think one of the things that is, I think it's a difficult question to ask what's the most important, but I think the thing to, for people to take away from this, I know people will watch it live and will watch the recording as well, is that LinkedIn is continuing to grow. It's an interesting platform because unlike Instagram or Facebook they don't actually report the monthly active users so they don't appear in the kind of like I suppose it sounds a bit sports like but we both love our sports league tables and that's not the right word but they don't appear when they're compared like for like with the other platforms but interestingly when we met last year and talked about LinkedIn I said that LinkedIn were forecast to hit a billion active users and they did actually achieve that back in February 2023. Oh, sorry, what February? What am I talking about? Menopause brain, sorry. November 2023. Gosh. So November 2023, we hit 1 billion users, which is a massive milestone for LinkedIn. Um, interesting fact, Tech Pixies related, just under 45% of users are women which always surprises me. The other thing that is really interesting to, to, for me is when I was learning all about social media, Instagram was always the platform that had loads of changes. Um, and LinkedIn kind of just carried on, you know, quite, you know, kept quite stable. But actually, over the last couple of years, the number of changes that come into LinkedIn has really grown. I'll just check I've got the right figures. So we go back to sort of 2020, there were just 50. 2021, it sort of dipped a little bit, there were just 40. But in 2022, it went to just over 100. And last year, there were 169. And already up until the 26th of Feb, we'd have 20 this year. So there's a lot of change happening. And I think the reason I would say that has happened is that back in 2016, LinkedIn was actually purchased by Microsoft. So I think that explains why we've started to see this increased pace in terms of changes and enhancements. Now, there are sometimes things that are taken away, but generally it's things that are being added or um, further enhanced. A fun fact, it was purchased by LinkedIn on the 13th of June, which happens to be my parents' wedding anniversary. So there we go. Oh, That's LinkedIn was purchased date. by Microsoft on the 13th of June. On the 13th of June, back in 2016. So, yeah, this year, my parents will be celebrating 60 years of marriage. Anyway, digressing. Um, so um, in terms of a couple of sort of I've pulled out five things. There's lots of things to think about with LinkedIn, but I've pulled out five things or, or trends to think about for 2024. So the first one, and I know, Joy, you're really drilling into this, is AI. I'm still not really sure where I sit with AI, but LinkedIn is starting to um, embrace AI for sure. Um, and you can start to see it coming through more and more. So a couple of things that have changed recently is that you've got AI collaborative articles. So that's where um, AI is generating articles and it's inviting users to share their knowledge and comment and then you can up and down vote so they're written by ai you also had introduced this creator design which is part of this integration um, with microsoft so their tool called microsoft designer it's been a beta test with linkedin one of the things that you know will it replace canva i hope not i love canva it's so flexible but that is part of a, a feature that you get with premium and we've started to see um ai suggest topics for you to write about now that is a premium feature but AI is starting to sort of get more 
involved with LinkedIn. And already in 2024, there's been a couple of AI related changes. So with collaborative articles, you'll be able to start replying to comments rather than just the up or down vote. So that's an interesting one. And then if you've got premium, I don't normally mention premium, but it'll become clear why I'm talking about premium, um, is that it's now going to offer you ideas for your next post. Because I know a lot of people will come to LinkedIn and think, I'm lost for inspiration. I don't know what I'm going to talk about today unless you've planned it and thought about it. So I think that's quite an interesting uh, feature okay, so that they've that's added from an AI perspective. They're bringing AI into the network itself to help accelerate yeah. the post creation, the article creation. Exactly. That's it. We, we used AI in LinkedIn for our, we have a agency client that we've worked with the last year and really elevating her profile. She's a trans woman. That's one of the only partners that we're aware of in one of the major um, firms in the UK. Uh, and so we, we used LinkedIn to elevate her profile. And what we were doing was taking um, videos that she created that were a couple minutes long. And then we were feeding the transcript into AI and saying, okay, write a LinkedIn article using this as the basis. So basically it just meant that we, because um, what we found we were doing was spending a lot of time on copywriting, sort of one person writing it and then another person checking it and improving it and then it coming to me for approval. And it was just slowing down the process. So what we did yeah. was we took these videos, we uploaded the transcript to AI. We said, okay, take this transcript and turn it into a LinkedIn article. And actually it's quite good now. Very few changes need to be made. I hardly ever need to approve mm -hmm. it. You know, I know that the grammar is correct and that, you know, there's all sorts of yeah. things going on. So um, on a basic level that AI sort of cleans up for you. So uh, that's worked really well for us. And we've been doing that for the last year. And it certainly cut down on the cost that was associated with yeah. delivering that service for someone. I was going to say, I think it's a really interesting debate because do you, there's, I think there's different schools of thoughts. Do you declare that you've used AI to help you write this content or not? You've started to see creators on LinkedIn right at the bottom that this was, um, I can't think of the wording they use it. Exactly, but the, the emphasis of it is this was created by um, using AI, but I have personalized it or have adapted it. Um, and it's really interesting because even in Canva, you can use AI to um, help write a document. Um, and I yeah, think it is the magic, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think it's it, it, it's helpful from a content creation perspective that you can use AI to to create multiple pieces of content. So for that example, you're just talking about that, Joy, where you've used it to create an article. You can then create posts and, and further content from that. When we do ask it to give like a YouTube description, it is very differently written than a LinkedIn mm. article. Mm. And but, you know, again, the the core of the content is actually from the video that we created. It's just that then it just writes it like the way the copywriter yeah. would kind of clean and it that's, up. And I was, I was listening to um, somebody who's a chat GPT sort of expert recently, and they were talking about the, the quality of the output that you get is based on the input that you give it in terms of how it learns. So that's really interesting that it's created from a video. So that's already got your, your tone of voice on it. So yeah, that's great. The next thing I was going to move on to was about being human. And that's a really big thing I, I'm saying for um, LinkedIn, well, probably all networks for 2024. And this is kind of like showing, what I mean is like showing your human side, because we all know that people love to do business with people and the face of that business. And I think that's going to become even more important um, on LinkedIn. So things I would stress people to think about is make sure that your profile photo looks like you. Um, I've told a few people about this, but I went to an event last year and quite a few people came up to me and said, hello, Marianne, I recognize you from your LinkedIn profile. And it's it's a bit like harking back to those days of dating where you would perhaps meet someone and their profile picture looks absolutely nothing like them because it's 10 or 15 years old. So I like to use that analogy to say, make sure you look like you actually do. Um, and make sure that your profile is worded in the first person, not the third person. It's all about I. Um, yeah, that's a big shift. I think if you see an if you see a profile that's still worded in the third person, it's pretty old. It hasn't been updated yeah. for a while. I think that shift exactly. happened a couple of years ago, but it's just reminding you, go back and look over it, make sure it's in the first person, not in the third person. That sort of yeah, tells I think 
we can be quite self-deprecating sometimes when you're talking about achievement for example if it's part of a you led the team often you're you're inclined to say we but actually I did that I led that I owned that I had those results so just flows through into the being human thing another thing is I know we talk about the facts on Instagram it's not all about the followers and the follower numbers and the vanity metrics it's about the quality of the community that you have created and that you are part of so again to me, that comes back to being human and being yourself and not, we started to see a lot more sort of bots around and fake and spam accounts. So you can stand out by being human and being yourself. And, you know, I was chuckling to myself earlier when I was getting confused with the dates about the menopause, but, you know, that's part of us as women. Use that in your content because that is your, you know, that is your reality. That's what's happening to you. So be human. And, and share that. I think one of the other things is about one of the copywriters I'm connected with, he's often talking to me about how he spotted um, very heavy AI generated content. Now, I, I don't really see it, but I suppose when you're a copywriter, your brain is perhaps wired in a different way and you read things in a different way. So another thing that I think is important is, again, to make sure that you are being yourself. And if you have used AI tools to help you, make sure that you're reflecting on it and uh, adapting it so it, it is you because you're using AI for a purpose aren't you to to help you generate ideas or, or extra information but make sure it, it sounds and reads like yourself so th- I know I'm laboring it but this is all about no being, but I think being that's, human. That's, that's a really important point with AI because it can sound very cardboardy and in fact we've been mm. using it you know, to we're we're part of um, Jeff Walker's Launch Club, and they've got an AI tool which helps build out your launch. You know, sort of things you can put. It, it even helps build out your lead magnet, and it helps build out your social media. And and actually, you sort of have to use it to generate an idea, and then you have to like then really put yourself into it because actually, if you just go off of what it gives you, it can be a bit cardboard sounding and a little bit, it's out of touch and it repeats itself a lot as well if you're not careful. <laughs> so you're right, yeah. the inputs matter. So very interesting yeah. that premium is rolling out a lot of AI options to make using the yeah. network. I'm coming on I'm coming on to that as one of my themes actually in a, in a second. So the next one, which is very topical because we're actually going live now, but I think Another thing to embrace more of in 2024, I mean, I know you, you already do as tech pixies. Um, I, myself, I'm a bit guilty of not doing this, but I think we should go a bit more into the lives of the audios. So that, again, complements the being human element because video and, and audio are well, well received by the algorithm. We know that from the recent algorithm report. I'm going to cover a few sort of tidbits. Richard van der Blom, if people don't follow him, he's a great person to follow. And he does a, I think it's a 163 page report he's done recently on on his algorithm findings. He's been doing that, I think, for five years now. And he summarizes it, but there's a lot of really good information in there. Um, and lives and audios are are part of that. So I think it it continues to enhance that who you are. The so Break down the difference between an audio and a LinkedIn live video. So we're doing a LinkedIn live video right now as we're doing our live podcast. I, I usually film the podcast yep. at 10 to 15 on Monday mornings. So we're going live right now. And of course, if you listen to the podcast, you can get the, the replay or you can watch the video on YouTube as a replay. So when you say when you say live videos, so the other aspect of this is live audio. So audio is still going on LinkedIn versus video. Yes, it is. What, so, how are people yep. using it? So similar to how we're doing it now, so you you can just do an audio event. So you can you can broadcast as yourself and just talk to people, but people can come and join in. So think a bit like um, Clubhouse. Yeah, I'm I was sure going to say it sounds a lot Clubhouse. like Clubhouse. Been, that one. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't been on there for so long, but yeah, similar to how um, Clubhouse works. But I think the thing that I like about the audio is that not everybody wants their face on camera. So I would encourage people, if you don't want to be on camera, I mean, I'm looking at me, I'm hands everywhere and you're still, but it, some of us don't like, like to do it. It can be quite nerve wracking and, you know, you're putting your head above the parapet, whereas an audio room, you can just talk. And it doesn't matter if you're working from home and, the, you know, the background is a mess, you've got your pyjamas on, you know, you've just washed your hair, whatever it might be, the audio room is there and plays a part for people. So 
I don't want people to think, oh my God, I've got to go live. I've got, you know, you've got to look immaculate. Blah, blah, blah. You don't. You've got the audio room there as, as an option as well. So I just wanted to sort of share that yeah. they are both features that are available. And if you don't want to go on camera and talk to your audience about what you do or interview people, you can use an audio room. Interesting. Very, very interesting. The, the next theme is security. So there have been quite a few um, sort of account takeovers happening, perhaps on other platforms. But I think LinkedIn have been watching. I mean, I've come from a financial services background. So, you know, the banks used to share sort of the fraud attacks and things like that. So I, I always sit here and think the networks perhaps share that or watch what's going on. But LinkedIn have introduced um, a way that you can verify your accounts. So, you know, on um Instagram and Facebook, you can have the elusive blue tick and you you can pay for it on um, Twitter as well. You can now verify your account on LinkedIn. Um, there are two ways of doing it. You can use your passport. There's a service provided by an organisation called Persona. There seems to be two kinds of camps on that. Do I really want to share my passport details with LinkedIn and a third party? Some people are doing that. Some people aren't. Um, you can also do it through um, what they call your employer email. So there's certain organisations where you can use your um, work email to verify yourself. So that's that's an interesting thing to think about. At the moment, it's com completely free. Whether you'll have to start paying for it, I don't know. I'm I know I'm sort of I'm going to get um, lots of uh, splinters, I think, but I'm I'm on the fence on this one as well. I would say you're, it's probably going to go towards paying because the other networks do. So why would they not? Well, I don't know. Or maybe I don't it's you have a view on a premium feature or something like that. Potentially, I, it's interesting. yeah. I'm pretty sure you know we we've done this we've done this series every year for a couple of years now, and I know your predecessor, which who is um, Beth Kirk, we had a big conversation Beth. about whether or not we should you should do premium. Is it required? I still think there's, I think you can leverage LinkedIn without premium, but what's your take on it? I mean, it's more advanced now than it was a couple of years ago, is it? It, it is, and, and that's that was actually my next theme I was gonna talk about because I've I've always said to people, you don't need premium. And when you talk to so someone like John Asperian, he, I'm in his membership, he grew his um, LinkedIn followers to sort of 50, 60,000 organically. He now pays for it. Um, I'm on the fence. The thing that I did recently do a premium trial because it was really irritating me because I've started doing a lot more networking and they have restricted the personalized connection requests that you can do. Some people have 10. I had five and it was driving me bonkers that I couldn't send a, a personalized connection request because to me, that's the etiquette. If somebody just blanket sends me a connection request and I don't know who they are, ignore, don't know this person. Um, so I got offered a trial and I, I took it up. Um, hand on heart, I was really busy, so I didn't explore all the options. But it is, you wait for it, fifty four ninety eight a month. Whoa. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. Oh. So, so if, what if I would primary, say, if your primary customers aren't on LinkedIn, probably don't need to be on premium. Yeah. But I would say there are other ways of doing it. So not paying for it, but so it, for me, it's about building that community and, and, and having that personalized conversation. So if there's yeah. somebody that you want to connect with, you can still comment and engage with their content and have a conversation there. And then you could throw in, oh, by the way, I'd love to connect with you. I'm going to send you a connection request. Yeah. So you've had a bit of a conversation and then you're not just going to appear as Marianne Avery would like to connect with you and they're going to think who the hell's that they know who you are so there are ways of doing it but but I um, think if your so, business is built on a DM strategy on LinkedIn premium you are going to want it and actually to be honest it's like you know I mean I I, I pay Facebook for Facebook ads because that's how we generate our clients you know, I know I will recoup the money back from when we do a launch. So I do think when you are thinking, should I invest? Should I not invest? It's I wouldn't look. I only said, whoa, to 58 pounds because I don't use LinkedIn to generate my leads. Right. So 
if I use LinkedIn to generate my leads, then I would think, oh, actually, this is a really good strategy. So I think we do want to, whenever we're making a decision about whether or not we want to invest in something, and that's, that's anything really, quite frankly. But if we're going to invest in something, it really has to be, uh, uh, the factor has to be, is there going to be an ROI on this? And, you know, and, exactly. and, 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 and making sure we're checking what the ROI is, which is return on investment. there are some, that, you know, in your normal profile, you have analytics and you can look at how you're growing your profile and you can look at what content is working. However, one of the features that premium gives you is it will show you who has viewed your profile since you posted a particular piece of content. So that, I think, is really interesting. However, I'm still not paying for premium. If they offer me another free trial, then I'll go all in and, and use all the features and see whether it's worth it. But for the moment, I'm, you know, I'm using my five personalized DMs very carefully. If I meet someone at a networking is that event, five I will, a day then? Five a month, Joy. Five a month. I was wondering why I suddenly couldn't do personal notes. Now I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, some people, some people still have ten. I only oh. have five, so you might have ten. I might it have ten. I don't think I have ten because I don't make that. Many. But the other thing, the other thing they've done as well is they've reduced the number of characters that you have in your connection yeah. request as well. Yeah, I've noticed so, that. So I think it depends how you're mm. using those to grow your network. So as, as I touched on, there are ways of, of going around it and, and commenting on people's content. You know, and if you've got a company page, you can comment as your company page. So there are different ways of, of doing it. But I think it, there's definitely more to consider rather than, you know, six, nine months ago. It's like, no, you don't need premium. It depends what you're what you're trying to achieve from your business, like you said. So, yeah. So yeah, I was a little bit shocked when I thought they said, would you like to renew your premium? And I was like, well, I looked at how much it was. I was like, I don't think I can really justify that at the moment. Yeah, and so, but again, if we're looking at, if we're looking at ROI, right? So, so just, and I think this is important for women to start thinking about because they're not thinking in this way. So we want people to think in this way. Mm -hmm. What is one client, right? When you're worth investing exactly. in a network or a program or whatever, you know, what we say in our social media program is this, we say, that it's going to cost you 1,997 pounds. However, if you show up, you do the work, you're going to generate that and more. And we know, you know, we, we know that someone can earn between a thousand and 3000 pounds a month on a regular basis for the next decade. So, you know, 1,997 pounds feels like a lot of money at the time. But when you look at the fact that someone could be making 120 to 360,000 pounds over the next decade, working part-time and flexibly, you know, to me, it's not, it's sort of like a no brainer on the ROI. Um, I mean, Marianne, you, you've been out of our program for several years now and you're, you are living proof that you can make, a, you have a, have a career flexibly part-time. I mean, you've got a great setup at the moment. If you do your ROI and you think about what, what are the services that I offer and what, how many of those am I going to sell every month that easily covers the LinkedIn costs, but then looking at ROI you have to think about what other costs do I have for my business and am I charging them to my clients so if I'm a social media manager and I choose to play, pay for a scheduling tool I need to make sure that that's in my cost to my client why should I yeah. carry that cost you and I work together on Proviz and that was one mm -hmm. of the things that yeah. we um, had to do was say okay right we got to build in the cost of all the software we're using in addition to our time not reduce our hourly rate to pay for the software that we're using to support us so that's super interesting um okay and yeah, we, we ended got, up we ended up choosing a scheduling tool and they paid for it yeah so yeah as as they should the so clients was, should cover the cost of the software that's required exactly. to deliver the service so i was just going to sort of finish, wrap up with um some of the things that came out of the algorithm report which I think are quite interesting for people to sort of take away. Um, so if you didn't catch the name earlier, people that are watching live or on, on catch up, he's called Richard van der Blom. So Blom is B-L-O-M. And he, so he's just released his fifth edition of his LinkedIn algorithm report. Um, there's a lot of information to digest and he does some lovely handy carousels summarizing it. So, so I've pulled out a couple of takeaways, which I thought were quite useful for people that are, 
um, using the platform, just sort of starting out to use the platform, getting confident with it. So 65% of people are accessing LinkedIn on their mobile. So my key takeaway from that would be make sure it's correctly sized for your mobile. Um, just as a sort of an addendum, I was showing somebody the other day where they created their lovely um, header image on in Canva and they looked at it on their desktop and it looked great. And I was like, have you looked at it on your mobile? Because lots of people will have text and when you have it, when you put your um, banner up, your profile picture can cover some of that text. So always check on your uh, mobile. They went, oh, yeah, no, I need to amend that. So just a reminder on that. His findings showed that. So I just go to the, the to his sort of how he did it. So he looked at one and a half million posts across 34,000 profiles and 26,000 company pages. So it's 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 quite big. Um, so he's saying that 15 percent, you get a higher click through rate if you're using a vertical photo as opposed to a square photo for your standard text and image post. That's where you've uploaded an image and you've, you've written your text. He's saying aim for between 900 and 1200 characters. Now, interestingly, because I do waffle, he says that short sentences with 12 words or under perform best. So I need to start thinking about what I'm writing and not waffling. Personalized images, as opposed to using stock photos, can increase your engagement by 45%. So take photos where we're going is what I would take away from that. So I'm now filling up my camera roll. If you're using a document post, so this is where, if, if you're using Instagram, think about a carousel. On LinkedIn, you upload it or download it from Canva as a PDF and upload it as a PDF, and that's how you swipe through. So he says, try and use less than 500 characters in your actual text bit on your post and then use um, vertical layouts. They get they give you 33 percent more reach and use between 25 and 50 words on each of your slides. If you like using polls, his uh, research shows just use three options. You can go up to five, but just use three and do it for a duration of a week. That gets you the best results. So I often oh. would do three or five days. So there we go. And then on a live, apparently the optimal length is 25 minutes. And an audio event is between 30 minutes and an hour. Um, and then scheduling. So this is always an interesting one because people think if you use an external scheduler, it can reduce your reach. And he says it doesn't. So those were some that of the That is the age old debate in social media management. <laughs> Well, that's for LinkedIn. I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, uh, that's for LinkedIn. And it's slowly, but LinkedIn, you can pre schedule now, which is great. Um, you can, exactly. And I'm, yeah, yeah. So that, yeah. that's another new feature that came last year. So that's really good. And you can do it on company pages as well. So that was my sort of whistle stop tour of what is happening on LinkedIn. And we managed to do that and... in 30 minutes, <laughs> which is great for the live algorithm. <laughs> Yeah, yes. Oh, uh, awesome. So now, if good. people want to connect with you and find you, where can they find you? They can find me on LinkedIn, Marianne Avery. So you can find Marianne at uh, on LinkedIn at Marianne Avery. You're also on the other networks. Um, where can they find you on the other networks? I uh, Well, I'm not very active on the other networks, I know, but I'm also on Instagram as Sochi Maz. I'm on Facebook as Marianne Avery. And then I'm also on X as socially mad you haven't left x yet <laughs> no no still there <laughs> Wait, raise your hand if you've left x <laughs> we started to, i just can't do it we've already we've pulled it for a client we've pulled it for ourselves all the stats have just dropped i can't even can't even do it anymore anyway but this was a very insightful interview um a very insight great research thank you marianne for bringing all this um preparation so uh, she's gone through the trends for 2024 she's gone through some key themes which is really important um and we've gone through some features that are being pulled away you know the ability to add a personalized note something we've always harped on is super important uh and the and the number of characters reducing so Really yep. great insights there. Thanks, Marianne. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Joey. Please. All right. We've got some amazing coaches at Tech Pixies. Marianne is just one of them. And uh, if you're interested in finding out more about how we can help you upskill social media so that you can 
become financially independent, either as a social media manager or as someone who uses social media in your own business, then you're going to want to check out uh, at techpixies.com. We've got a brand new social media superhero boot camp um, uh, that's uh, going on either live or a self paced. So whenever you listen to this, you can go and check that out, techpixies.com forward slash boot camp. And uh, we're really excited about the new revamp of the curriculum that we're in the middle of doing right now. All of our coaches are working really hard to make sure that the content we produce in our training program is completely up to date. Our coaching calls that happen every single week, we update our students on any changes as they're happening. And uh, it's a wonderful place to hang out if you want to learn about social media, if you want to leverage social media. And if you're afraid to use social media or don't like using social media, you're perfect for us. Uh, you will want to definitely check out our boot camp and get started on your social media journey. If you have any questions, of course, always email us at support at techpixies.com. Uh, let us know if you enjoyed this episode or not. And um, we are so grateful to you for being loyal listeners. Just a little update for those of you who are wondering. We have not only hit the 500 uh, subscriber mark on YouTube, but we surpassed it. We're 518 subscribers as of today. So I want to say thank you to everyone who uh, has uh, listened to, to my please at the end of all of our podcasts and invited you to uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. We uh, That was a big milestone that we wanted to hit. Last year, we hit 100,000 downloads in the podcast. This year, we've hit 500 subscribers on YouTube. Um, and we've also crossed the 24,000 mark across all of our socials, uh, heading towards 25,000, which, you know, really, if I, if I honestly go back to 2025 or 2015, sorry, not 2025, 2015, when I had this vision to help 12 women in a cold church hall learn how to use social media, I had no idea we would be at where we are today, uh, nearly nine years later on nearly a uh, thousand women in our social media management certification program. Um, it's a real pleasure and honor to do this podcast and to bring this information to you. I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite parts of the week. So I really, really appreciate those of you who are loyal listeners, listen at weekend and week out. Uh, this is your podcast as much as it is mine. So if you ever have suggestions about uh, things we should be uh, including in the podcast, people we should be interviewing, please don't don't hesitate to let us know. Uh, let Email support at techpixies.com and uh, we'll definitely be uh, listening to any feedback that you give us. Um, and I am so grateful to you for listening today, especially if you're with us live. Um, it's been wonderful. We have, we've, we've had quite a few um, live viewers the last few weeks. They, I think moving the live podcast to Mondays at 1015 has been a good move. And then also a uh, shout out to our amazing social media team, um, Kelly Austin in particular, who really has been pushing us to advertise that we're going live. So um, you'll be seeing more in advance what we're running. But just know 1015 on Mondays, I'm live doing our podcast and I'd love, for, love to see you there. Even if you listen to the recording or watch the replay, uh, I'm super grateful to you for keeping this podcast going. It is one of my favorite things to do always. All right. See you around. Bye for now.